So here at the Tetride Group, another passion of ours is electric bicycles. That's why we started the company Tetride Cycles. And one of the bikes that we were interested in is this Ingui. Um, and we're going to review this bike today. We're going to assemble it, we're going to test it, and we're going to compare it. We're going to compare it to the Electric XP 2.0 because this is also a fat tire 20-inch uh, bike that is foldable. It kind of uses the same uh, frame design as Electrics, except this has a lot more options. This is a lot of features packed into this bike at another what I think is a very affordable price. So let's go ahead and get this box opened up, see what's inside, get it put together, and get to testing. So while we're pulling the bike out of the box, one thing I wanted to mention is that I paid full price for this. This was not sent to me and this is not a paid review. I did a lot of research on these foldable lead bikes and I wanted an upgrade from one of my previous bikes. And it looked like this had all the features that I was looking for. So I'm pretty excited to get this put together and test it out. So now that we got out of the box, let's take a look at what we found inside the box. Of course, it doesn't look like there's a lot of items here, so it should be a fairly easy assembly. First, we have the handlebar riser uh, assembly here, seat post, set of pedals, the charger. Got a neat little tool kit that uh, came with the bike. As neat as that can be, I guess. A little reflector, uh, washers for the pedals. Uh, this is our front fender we're gonna have to install. And of course, our front tire. We got the keys for the bike and that goes underneath here to the battery uh, right under here and of course we got the instruction manual that came with it so that's everything inside the box now let's just see how long it's going to take us to assemble it Ingui Engine Pro, here it is, all assembled. So that assembly took me, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes. Um, it really was not bad at all, very easy to do. Now I'm going to, um, before I take this down and take it outside, we're gonna go over all the specs and look at the features on this thing. As you can see, it is a foldable bike, full suspension. This is what I'm excited about. It has the shock up here in the front for the rear suspension and it has the fork suspension up front with their adjustable and they have lockouts and all on them. But before I take it down, the very first thing I'm gonna do is do a pre-flight inspection on it. I'm gonna go over every nut and bolt on the bike to make sure that everything is tight and secure. And we're gonna fill the tires with flat out. This by far is the best product I have used for tires. See, I live in an area where pure evil grows out of the ground known as goat heads and cacti. Anything with tires on it will go flat if you try to ride off-road. And I've used other products. I've used the slimes and this and that. And flat out by far is the best product to use on your bike. So I'm going to go ahead and get the tires filled up and do the pre-flight inspection. And we're going to take it down and check out all the features and benefits of this Ingway Engine Pro. All right, now we can talk some specs on this Ingway Engine Pro. This thing is really fun. Um, I just took a quick drive, you know, to get down here so we could just go over this, but let's just go straight to the power system because that's what everyone wants to know. How fast and how far will it go? Well, the Engine Pro comes with a 48 volt, 16 amp hour battery, and that's a very respectable battery for a uh, bike this size. I think we're gonna get pretty a long distance out of it. How far an electric bike will go is kind of subjective. It, it's, it really all depends on the, the weight of the rider, the style of riding and all. So one thing that I can say about distance is most of the e-bikes that I have and I have ridden, I've never killed a battery. 
Now that's me personally, and I think the average person on just regular rides and commuting or whatever is gonna have a hard time killing a battery. We're talking 40, 50, 60 miles probably on this battery. So distance doesn't really concern me. However, powering this is a 750 watt hub motor. We got the hub motor here in the rear and that will peak at a thousand watts. I mean, this thing has got some power. It, you know, uh, most bikes this size, we're kind of used to seeing like a 500 watt in there and 500 watt will do the job, but it's just, there's no thrills, you know, with 500 watts. It gets the job done, but it's just not real exciting. This 750 watt motor is, is pretty exciting and we'll, we'll get more into that uh, in just a little bit. Um, to stop this bike, we do have disc brakes on the front and rear, and these are hydraulic Logan disc brakes. So we have hydraulic front and rear brakes. So that is definitely a nice addition to this bike. Look at this nice heavy duty rear rack here. I think this bike has like a 300 pound maximum capacity, which is a lot <laughs> to be honest with you and this rear rack is is definitely stout i'm going to put some pannier bags on there and start carrying the gear i like to carry my tools and uh spare tube and uh, first aid kit and stuff in there but anyways that rack's going to handle whatever we're going to put on there this is kind of what sets the bike apart from other bikes in this class is the rear suspension we have the rear shock uh, right here kind of in the center of the frame and you can definitely tell it's working it's definitely absorbing some of the impacts as i was riding here off-road along with the front suspension here um that's that's actually a pretty good front suspension on this it um it's really taking in the bumps but it i can feel the bumps although we have a front and rear suspension i'm still getting jarred a little bit more than i would on a regular mountain bike or one of my bigger fat tire bikes um and i, I took the tires up to like 23 psi so i'm gonna take a little pressure out of them and see if that helps because usually these fat tire bikes uh the the big tires will absorb a lot of that impact so at 23 psi i might be a little high i'm going to take them down to about 18 or so and see how that feels off road So turning the bike around here, you know, we can see we've got a nice big front chain ring with the guard. What I like about the guard on the front chain ring here is, is it keeps your pants from getting caught in the chain, between the chain and the sprocket. So I always like a cover on there, and that's good that this comes with one. Our derailleur, Altus, uh, this is a Shimano Altus, and it's got an eight-speed cassette on it. So what I've noticed is that that, that's a that's a pretty good range of gearing on that eight speed uh just on the way over here i actually got this up to like 27 28 miles an hour in sport mode we've got three modes but about i could pedal about 26 miles per hour um without feel like i'm pedaling air you know you you can only get so much speed with that uh sprocket with the gearing and you're just not helping anymore the pedal assist just didn't help and you're just pedaling air so that's pretty good though to get 26 miles per hour out of that and something else to take into consideration is not only these fat you know 20 by 4 inch tires which are really nice is the um the solid wheels here we don't have spokes like some of the other bikes in this price range would have and what that means is that um, a bike that has a 300 pound capacity usually spokes will stretch and kind of get out of line and we'll have to you know adjust the spokes and kind of true those wheels up but with the solid wheels i don't think we're going to have to do that so that is also a nice addition to this bike so coming around to the rear of the bike we notice we do have a rear tail light now this is just a rear tail light this is not a brake light the fender is straight but it's the mounting bracket you can see is mounted a little off center and that little things like that just i don't know really drive me up the wall <laughs> but that's just my ocd most people no problem the fender does look straight over the tire so that's a good deal looking at these pedals part of the folding option of this bike is the pedals themselves it's got a nice metal pedal here metal pedal and you, to, to when you fold the bike you can push the pedal in and fold it over like that and that kind of helps with um, storing the bike or when you're actually using it to transport folding it to transport here's the lever where we uh release the uh the center portion of the bike and that's how we fold it in half 
Coming around to the front, we do have the front headlight. Um, they are on a sensor. We can either turn them on or just have the sensor turn the light on. So I haven't uh, ridden it at night yet, so I don't know how bright, how effective they are, but we will check that out. Coming up, taking a look at the uh, Logan brakes. Again, these are hydraulic and they have a really nice feel to them. Now taking a look at the command center. We've got our hand grips. These are locking grips and um, they're leather. They kind of, they, they feel pretty good. I'm kind of used to seeing these type hand grips on these bikes and they got the little um, side here so you can kind of rest your hand on, kind of reduce fatigue. They, they, they feel pretty good. One thing about this bike is you see how narrow the handlebars are and it feels kind of weird. So that's going to be probably my first upgrade on this bike is to put wider um, handlebars on there so that we can put more attachments up here, headlights and whatever we need to. Here's our keypad. We've got the on button here, lights, plus, minus, and information. We've got a nice bright LCD screen that I can easily see. Now the sun is directly on that screen. You can see how well we can see that. We've got, um, you can see here, zero, no pedal assist. We got up to five pedal assist modes. Right now, we are in the sport. What we'll do is we'll press and hold the information button. And then that's how we uh, are going to change into modes. There's eco, normal mode, sport mode. As far as I'm concerned, sport is the only mode we need on this bike. Here's our shifter. We downshift here, and then over the top is where we upshift uh, with their finger. That That is part of the Shimano system and it is really nice. I really like that. Our handlebars are telescopic here. We can just open this up and we can raise, lower our handlebars as far as we want to. This lever here is just how we fold the handlebars down. We'll lift that up, pop it down, and then the handlebars, you see, will fold down for, again, for just uh, transporting the bike, if we put it in the back of a car or an SUV. Front shocks are adjustable and do have a lockout on them. Really nice. Front fender fit really good for me. Uh, really centered over the tire. And I really like this deep gray color on this bike. It looks really sharp. So enough about the specs. Let's go for a ride. All right, see our battery is at 100%. We're on a Sport PA Sys uh, number two. And that's where we're gonna start out here to uh, Let's see, so I'm trying to pedal. Okay, so it took a second for, but that, that's normal with the cadence sensor. So it's gonna take a second for, uh, you know, the power to come in. Now I did let some air pressure out of the tires, so I'm down to about 17 PSI, which made a huge difference in uh, the ride quality. It rides a lot smoother than when I, had it about 22 or 23 on my way out here. So we'll get off road and we'll kind of do a speed test on this or I guess back on the trail. Yeah, really smooth off road. It handles really well too, even with these short handlebars, it's not terrible. You can see it's got a nice little watt meter down here on the bottom. So right now I'm using, what, 200 watts or so. 10 miles an hour, pedal assist too. All right, so first thing I wanna do is a throttle only test. Um, so no pedal. Let's go ahead and go full throttle. Let's turn it up to PA5, I guess, to get full power. Okay, there we go. Not bad. Not bad at all, not pedaling. So decent amount of pickup. I'm a bigger guy too. I'm six foot one, 220 pounds. So it's gonna take a second to get up to speed. All right, so we really got a good wind coming into us. We just hit 28 miles per hour. So 29, okay, 28. So I think it's a steady 27, 28 miles an hour throttle only. Uh-oh, 30. I just saw 30 when I got out of the wind. Wow, 30.3 throttle only on flat ground. Ooh, coming into a curve. 
slow it down. All right, let's bring it down to PA1. And one thing I want to see, so I put it in PA1. You can see down here it shows a negative 69 watts. We're actually doing regenerative braking right now. This bike has a regenerative motor, so it's actually putting power back into the battery. Uh, negative 34 watts right at the moment. We are 100% battery, so we're not going to get full regenerative capability. But it only works in pedal assist one. So, you know, really about as fast as I can pedal in PA1 is about 10 miles an hour and what's neat is we can go in this screen and we can set the amount of percentage of power we want for each pedal assist mode right now i think i'm just at like 20 or 25 percent probably 20 percent i'm not sure i have to go in and look at it again but about 10 miles an hour let's bump it up to pa2 i got a little boost in power i think that's around 30 something percent that gives me uh, just a couple more miles per hour about 12 let's bump it up to pa3 that's a good boost. I think that's about 50%. About 16 miles an hour. And that's about as fast as I can pedal. Let's see. All right, I'm in. Shifted all the way up to gear number eight. So pedaling about 17 in PA3. Let's go to four. Alright, so PA4 pedal assist, we're doing about 25. And that's really about as fast as my legs can pedal assist, you know, give any type of help to the motor. So that's about as fast as I'm really gonna be able to go pedal assisting without throttle. Let's just bump it up to PA5 and see what we can do here. Twenty five, twenty seven, twenty eight. Yep, yeah, that's as fast as I can pedal, about twenty eight miles an hour. And go back to PA one. Back up to PA five. Yeah, I'm really surprised that the dual suspension really makes a big difference on this bike. Um, and that extra travel in the front forks also makes a big difference. And then letting the pressure out of the tires. Every, everything about, you know, a fat tire, full suspension on a small foldable e-bike. The suspension on this is actually pretty impressive. The power comes in as I start to pedal with the cadence sensor. The pedal, the pedal or the uh, power comes in really slow, kind of nice and smooth. Let's see how we do in some grass. Oh yeah, it doesn't even feel the grass. It just floats right across. This is nice, thick, soft grass. Didn't even feel it coming off a curb and the suspension did really good so so i'm really impressed at fifteen hundred dollars this bike packs a lot of features like the 750 watt motor that peaks at over a thousand watts it also has regenerative braking it's got this nice heavy duty rear rack this bike has a total capacity of 300 pounds so we could put quite a bit of weight back here on this back rack we've got full hydraulic disc brakes where else are you going to find that uh, type of brakes on a on a foldable e-bike in this price range um, full suspension front and rear we got really good travel in the front and the rear makes a really big difference um, got the solid wheels so we don't have to worry about them uh, the spokes stretching like some of the cheaper e-bikes it's going to have spoked wheels on them um, we got the true four inch fat tires, you know, I mean, not everybody's a big fan of the four inch fat tires, but it makes a big difference from someone who's a bigger guy like me who likes to go off road in this soft grass and the sand and take it camping and, and to be able to go off road, the four inch tires makes a big difference. And it does make a big difference in the ride quality as well. I know it doesn't sound like a between a three and a four inch tire, but yeah, it does make a big difference. Um, got the 16 and a half amp hour battery in it. You know, that is really a decent 
decent sized battery for this size bike. Um, full color display, I really like that. You can really see it in the sun. Uh, the control switches here, really soft. They feel really good. Uh, good tactile clips, you know, clicks to them. It, it, it feels really good. Um, got the front and rear headlight that runs off the main battery control system that's auto sensing. Um, it's, it's just, it, it's got a lot of features in it for that price range. Yes, there are cheaper bikes in this price or in this style, I guess, the foldable e-bikes and those other companies have amazing ad campaigns, you know, where they send all these bikes out to influencers and stuff and they tell you all about them. And they're telling you about the features of the bike and don't get me wrong, they're nicer bikes, but they don't have all the features of this for just a little bit more money. So this is definitely something that you might want to take into consideration if you're looking for one of these foldable e-bikes, especially if you're taking it camping and off-roading. Uh, this full suspension bike is probably something to definitely take a look at. So any questions, please let me know and thanks for watching.